Houston, Texas. How are we doing? Hell yeah. It's good to be here, man. I got off the phone just a few minutes ago with my dad. He was congratulating me for today. And then he goes, I'm so excited you didn't listen to me and join the army. He goes, I don't think you would have made it. I was like, I was like, yeah, no shit, dipshits. Like my dad wanted this to protect our freedom. Which if you ask me, seems like a liability. Like if I turned on CNN and it was 90 of me invading a country, I'm like, yeah, I'm betting on the other team. They're already shitting and crying, you know. Like it was crazy. My dad, he knew who I was. He knew I'm a pussy. Like I slept with a nightlight until I was 13. I would have made the worst soldier ever. I would have been like, it's getting dark out there. Personally, I'm more of a daytime soldier. <laughs> he would put me in sports. My dad would put me in sports to man me up. He put me in wrestling in middle school. I didn't really care. I went 0-16. Coach comes up to me and goes, for your next match, we're going to get you a win. For your next match, you're going to wrestle a girl. What you've asked me seems like a lose-lose situation. Because I can't beat her and be like, yeah, you got the T-zone, bitch. You know, it's like... <laughs> But what happened was worse because he failed to tell me this girl was district champ three years in a row. I could barely do a push up. This bitch could deadlift a cow. And she deadlifted me. And the worst part about it was, as she's pinning me down, I'm going through puberty at the time. I got hard. So for a year after that, anytime I lost at anything, I would just get erect. Guys, it ruined friendships. I'd be at birthday parties playing Mario Kart and I'm like, Guys, I gotta win this next grace, you know? Cause I think I'm gonna come, you know? <laughs> and you don't wanna come before the cake. <laughs> the one sport I am good at, the one sport I am good at is bowling. I'm good at bowling. Eh, no one respects my sport. You civilians use bowling as a date night. I can't take a girl on a date bowling. I get too into it. I bring my balls. I wear the glove. Halfway through, she's like, what if we put up bumpers? I'm like, bitch, my name's on the wall. People know me here. You see Barb in the corner smoking a cigarette through a neck hole? Surprisingly, she talks, you know? I don't need to show up on my Monday league. And she's like, I saw Tony bowl with bumpers. <laughs> what a pussy. <laughs> so how about you throw a ball? Cause I ain't getting hard right now, bitch. Crazy, man. I'm a millennial. I'm sorry. I'm one of those anxious millennials. Turn on Fox News. They're like, these millennials are pussies. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> right? I didn't want to be this way. <laughs> I think millennials, man, I think we're a little anxious because if you think about it, we've seen a lot of shit. Like, one of my first memories was 9 11. I was in kindergarten. I remember every morning in kindergarten, we would watch Reading Rainbow. And that day, the teacher came into the classroom and she just turned off the TV. And to be honest, at first, I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, there better be something going on. <laughs> and then this teacher in front of a classroom full of children decided to yell, we're under attack, and havoc broke loose. Juice boxes were flying, kids were shitting themselves. <laughs> and looking back at it, I feel like her reaction was a little extreme. Because at the time, we were living in Kansas City, Missouri. We were fine. <laughs> right? It wasn't like the terrorists were going to go after the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and then our Walmart Supercenter. <laughs> I looked it up. You can't even get a direct flight from most places to Kansas City. That means the terrorists would have had to hijack a plane, go to Indianapolis, do a four-hour layover, <laughs> hijack a second plane. <laughs> I remember going home that day, my dad was home. And growing up, my dad would have like these kind of messed up sayings to get me to do chores around the house. One of his sayings to get me to make my bed in the morning, he would go, Tony, make sure you make your bed because if you don't, it might cause a butterfly effect to worse things in the future. So 9-11 <laughs> was the worst day I decided not to make my bed. <laughs> Dude, I remember coming home, seeing Tower 2 fall. My dad's like, look what you did now. I was the first 9-11 conspiracy theorist. People are like, who did this? I was like, I know who did it. 
And all I know, he's very, very solid. <laughs> shit man millennials have been through a lot covid covid was crazy i gotta be honest i was scared of covid because if you remember when covid first started the way the news reported on it they're like if you're fat <laughs> they're like we're gonna miss you i was like what the fuck like i was literally eating a tostitos pizza roll while watching that broadcast it got to the point where i was like if i'm gonna die of covid i want to try a new drug <laughs> yeah but i <laughs> I tried cocaine, <laughs> which is the worst drug to do during a lockdown, right? I can't go out just excited. I'm just at home, sitting on my couch, doing a lot of lines, <laughs> binge watching Tiger King, just going, yeah, that's my fucking king right there. <laughs> fucking free Joe Exotic, motherfuckers. <laughs> if you're ever gonna try a new drug, though, I have one piece of advice. If you're gonna try a new drug, just turn off your phone. So I remember that night, me and my buddy were doing a lot of cocaine <laughs> and an article popped up on our, our, on our phone saying about like, talking about how a lot of families hadn't got their stimulus checks yet and that they were going really hungry. And now I'm sitting there looking at a pile of cocaine <laughs> that I had just bought with my stimulus check. <laughs> and I was just like, oh shit, a family could have eaten with this. <laughs> I was like, I got some biscuits in the fridge. Let's go feed these fucking families. <laughs> Uh, that's how we do it. Yeah. You're old, sir. You should probably not do cocaine. Thank you. For oh, sure. I didn't think this was actually a problem, you know? She's like, I need him to stop. His dick won't get hard anymore. It's an issue. Oh, we're having fun. I stick with weed now, though. I like weed. Yeah, hardcore. It's always white girls. We can smoke it and not get in trouble. Dude, I live in Texas. I love Texas, but I think it's crazy that weed is still illegal here. Like last year, they passed a bill. Almost anybody can just carry a gun, but not weed. But to be fair, nothing mellows me out more than a nine millimeter to my face. Right? Every time I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm chill. You know, it's... I like, I don't like, I, I think weed's gotten a little too strong though. I really do. Like me, I won't take edibles from a stranger just because everybody has different tolerance levels. I made that mistake once in Arkansas. I was doing a show out there. Waitress working the club comes up to me after the show. She's like, hey, Tony, would you like an edible? I'm like, sure. How strong is it? She goes, 25 milligrams. Perfect. Go back to my hotel room. It'll be a good night. Take the edible, it's kicking in, Forrest Gump's playing on TV. I'm getting stoned, just like, run, Forrest, run, you know? Everything's good. But then one thing happens, I just progressively start getting higher, and higher, and higher. Dude, I got so high, I started sounding like Forrest Gump. I was just like, I think I got the munchies, Jimmy. Have you guys ever gotten so high, your legs stopped working? I felt like Lieutenant Dan in that fucking movie. The worst part of that night was I had to go pee, but I couldn't get up to use the bathroom. So I had to make the executive decision to piss on myself. Houston, do you know what it feels like to feel like R. Kelly and one of his victims at the same time? <laughs> like my mind was telling me no, but my body, my body was telling me yeah. <laughs> Next morning I call the waitress. And I tell her, I go, ma'am, I don't think that was 25 milligrams. She's like, no, I'm 100% sure. I'm like, can we just double check? I hear her go through her bag. She picks up the phone, goes, Tony, it was a little more. And I go, what's a little more? And she goes, it was about 250 milligrams. And then she had the audacity to say, it's not that big of a difference. I was like, bitch, I became an autistic pedophile. <laughs> That's never happened on 25 milligrams. <laughs> It's weird in America, though. It's weird in America that we still frown upon weed in a lot of places, but almost everywhere we're giving our kids Adderall, which if you don't know, is just one chemical away from meth. Dude, that's why all these kids are on TikTok fucking just dancing. Dude, they're cracked out. 
Look at a kid dancing on TikTok and then a homeless guy dancing, same dance moves. They're all just doing the gritty, you know? And I'm not a scientist, but I feel like there's a correlation between us giving our kids Adderall and the rise of school shootings. I just don't think every kid needs to be that focused. <laughs> right? Like me, I have ADHD. They never gave me Adderall. I'm not saying I would ever done a school shooting, but I know for a fact I could have never planned one. You know? <laughs> it's a lot of steps. I would have gotten distracted. I know myself. <laughs> Cause I got bullied, I got bullied. My most relentless bully was this kid named Miguel in middle school. There'd be days I'd get on the bus after school just defeated. I'd be like, man, fuck Miguel. If Miguel doesn't stop fucking with me, I'm gonna have to go in there and I'm gonna, oh shit, they brought the McRib back and I just forgot about it. And everything was okay. School shootings though, man, it's like, I'm 28. It's kind of been around my whole life. I feel like my generation, we look at it a little different. We see different things. Like the Tennessee shooting happened. First, I was sad. But then the first article I read, it said, woman shoots up school. And I was a little relieved. I was like, finally a woman's taking the heat off of guys that look like me. Right? You look at every other school shooter. They post a picture. I'm like, yeah, that guy looks like my brother, you know? Like we've heard of resting bitch face. I have resting school shooter face. It's not fun to have. This is what terrorism looks like in 2023. I know what brown guys went through after 9-11. <laughs> and then the second article I read, it said trans woman shoots up school. I'm like, that's fine. Right? Still a woman. <laughs> but then they had a poster fucking picture and I was like, yeah, she looks like my brother too. This bullshit. <laughs> it's weird, man. I grew up here in Texas and in Texas we would have school shooting drills in our high school. But they weren't really drills, it was more like assembly, right? The principal would sit us in the cafeteria. He'd go, if a shooter comes from there, fucking run over there. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, I'm not gonna go fucking fight the guy, you know? Like, I thought we should actually run drills. Give the kid in a trench coat a Nerf gun, let him run around for an afternoon. See what hallways he hits, you know, learn from him a little bit. <laughs> the biggest surprise though is that we told everybody in the classroom the game plan. <laughs> like we're telling everybody? Because <laughs> statistically the shooter's amongst us, you know? <laughs> Why not pick 20 kids with the biggest red flags, give them a corn CD, send them outside for 30 minutes, go over the real game plan, then be like, come on in, you know? <laughs> we weren't talking about anything. <laughs> it's crazy. You turn on the news, how are we gonna stop school shootings? Let's arm the teachers. I don't think so. <laughs> Sophomore year of high school, my science teacher, we made him cry three times in one year. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable giving him an AK-47. Because I feel like he'll go from teaching us about the Big Bang Theory to doing his own Big Bang Theory. I think I found a solution. I think we should take prostitutes off the streets, convert them to social workers, put them in our high school. Think about it. A kid's acting up, teacher sees it. She goes, Jeremy, fucking go see Cinnamon. <laughs> Dude, he's gonna come back to class with a new lease on life. He's gonna be like, guys, that shit earlier was crazy. I've learned to love myself, I love you. I definitely love cinnamon, you know? Thank you guys, my name's Tony Casillas. You guys are awesome.